everybody. Welcome to the 1989 Indianapolis Boat, Sport, and Travel Show. Here in a few minutes, this place is going to be a little more crowded than this, and we won't be able to drive you through the entire show. But we do want to take you through a sampling of the show this year. We'll talk to folks about camping. We'll be talking to them about fishing and what the latest thing in boats are. So stick with us. We'll be back in just a minute show and Craig I've just seen some most amazing fishing going on out here I I've never seen anyone fish for humans before I tell you I'm I'm uh, I'm probably one of the few people that do it they pull pretty hard they're pretty tough as you saw that one there he almost made it give us a good workout well, this is this is quite some sport I, uh, I wonder how you come up with this well we're uh, I'm in the saltwater sport fishing industry up in New England and uh, what we do at these uh, sport and travel shows is we try to bring a little bit of New England sport fishing out here a lot of these people well, they're probably never going to see the ocean, let alone ever get the opportunity to sit in a fighting chair. So what we do is we offer it to them if they want to either be the fish or the angler and uh, come on out and see what it's all about. But we've got a large uh, display here, a pretty good video and of a lot of types of fish. Here's a mako shark being caught right now. And uh, that's all we're trying to do is just bring a little bit of what we have and probably take for granted and show it to somebody else that's never seen it. Adds a little levity to it, too, to, oh, yeah, to see yeah. you reeling in kids or, or even our big guy Eric there. Yeah. He, uh, Eric, is a, he, was a, he was a tussle. <laughs> he was a tussle. There, there's quite a large fish uh, there behind us. I'm not even sure. Is a shark classified that's, a fish? That's, uh, that's Walter. That's, that's a white Walter. shark. That's a fish. That, uh, that fish we caught in uh, 1983, August 5th, 1983. That's, uh, that's an adult uh, male, about 15 years old. That's the actual mount. Now, a lot of people, when they see that, they say, well, that's not the real fish. We're not, we're not trying to say that's the real fish. What the taxidermist does in all uh, saltwater big game fish like that is they lay the fish out and they make a mold right on top of it. And that's what you're viewing here. Now, this, this thing was actually taken right off the original white shark. So every little nook and cranny you see in this mount, that was in the actual fish. Okay, so this isn't the actual fish itself. It's just a mold of it. Right. Taxidermist mount. Now, and then the taxidermist would only make one of these, right? Right. right. So would... Now, generally, in a, in a shark mount like this, they would use the actual jaw and teeth in this. Okay. And we elected not to. We do over 100 show days scattered around the, the 50 states and up in Canada. And uh, what we did is we had the taxidermist take the original teeth and mold them. And that's what he used in this so we can replace these teeth. Now, we do have the original jaw and teeth, which I'll show you in just a few minutes. Okay. Well, did you catch this? Yes, we did. Yeah. Now, what, what kind of experience is that? I mean, how does that compare to, to catching Eric? Well, we do we do a lot of uh, a lot of shark fishing. Everybody asks us that. I mean, this is you know it's a big fish and it's certainly impressive out here. But we see quite a few of them. Uh, this shark behind me took uh, five and a half hours of of uh, constant pulling to. Uh, get them to the boat, but uh, there are some fish, believe it or not, in the ocean that pull harder than sharks. Giant bluefin tuna, blue marlin, they're, they're, they're much, much faster, and they've got a, a faster burst of speed as and opposed to a shark. It, it sounds like that it takes an exceptional person to be able to uh, to reel one of these in, let alone uh, contemplate fishing for them if you're, you're expecting a five and a half hour fight. Well, one of the things that we see up in New England all the time is we'll get a guy strapped into a pretty decent fish, either in the chair like this or in the stand-up harness that we have, and 10 minutes into the fight, the guy's, you know, waiting to give the old timeout signal, but uh, nobody, the, the fish out on the other end, he's, he's not taking any time out, so it's, uh, you know, you have to be in, you have to be in pretty good shape to do it. How would you classify your typical customer? Well, I'm, I'm kind of the exception to the rule because the people I take out have been with me for 15, 18 years. I've always been involved in the, in the charter boat business. Uh, we don't, to be honest with you, I don't even bring a brochure here to these shows. I have a business card. If anyone's interested from this area to fish with me, we, we book so far in advance. So, so my people that uh, go with me are, are, are pretty experienced. The average charter boat, though, up in New England, uh, they've, you know, they've got their share of problems, except with the exception who the guy's been there before for or is in real, real good shape. It's a strenuous workout. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Well, having actually caught one of these, how does it compare to the, the kinds of stories that we see in the movies, Jaws and all of those? Well, Jaws was, uh, there's an awful lot of uh, truth in Jaws. We shark fish the same way, we chum, we don't take uh, pieces of beef or a horse with us or all that blood and everything, but we do chum for the sharks. And uh, there was little tidbits here and there blown out of 
blown out of proportion just to get us to go to the movies to, to view the movie. But there was an awful lot of truth involved. And then the shark fishing trip can end up the same way. I mean, we've, uh, we harpoon fish, and uh, we've had big fish on and popped them off. We've had them jump and swarm and bite the boat and everything else. So it's, there's, there's a lot to it. What do you like most about it? About fishing? Sure. Well, it's a it's a combined thing. I, I enjoy taking people out and watching them catch fish. I mean, I've caught everything there is to catch. So for me, uh, uh, there's there's more to it than just catching the fish. Uh, I, I like taking a group, like you see this group on the video here is cod fishing. Now, this was an older group, and uh, they don't fish that much. They fish maybe three, four times a year with me, and that's it. And to just take them out and show them a good day and a good time, and everybody goes away with a happy experience, you know? I also like talking about it. I tour all around, like I said. We do over 100 show days a year, and uh, talking about it is is, is fun. I'm, I feel I'm fortunate to have the best of both worlds. About the time I get sick of talking about it, it's time to do it. I'm on the tail end of my uh, show schedule right now, and it's, you know, it's it's kind of getting to be old hat now, you know. Uh, we've been on the road for so long, I haven't seen my wife and kids in a long time, and, and uh, in April we'll start cod fishing, and uh, by the time November rolls around, I'll probably be tired of the fishing and be wanting to get back on the road again. So I kind of feel I'm fortunate I get the best of both worlds. Quite an interesting life. I thank you very much for spending some time with us. Thank you very much. You enjoy the show. Okay.